Director CPIB and guests. Very happy to be here to open the Corruption Reporting and Heritage Centre. Last year, I launched CPIB's roving exhibition. In fact, almost every year I attend a CPIB event. And there's a purpose to it. It is to emphasize the overriding importance of keeping Singapore clean and incorrupt. A clean system is not the natural way things are. Corruption happens in every society, and it's ultimately driven by human nature and greed. Because there'll always be individuals who will be tempted to break the rules. And when someone does, we must make sure they are caught and severely dealt with because otherwise, more will be tempted to try, and beyond a point, people will have a new idea of what is acceptable, and we are in a bad state. So, for CPIB's 60th anniversary celebrations in 2012, five years ago, they had all three PMs, past and present, attending. Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, ESM Go Chok Tong, and myself. Everyone knows that Singapore has maintained a high standard of honesty with a clean and incorrupt system. By international rankings, we do very well, whether there's Transparency International, whether there's a World Bank, whether there's a PERC, the Pacific Economic Risk uh, Assessment. We rank as one of the least corrupt societies in the world. And CPIB tables an annual report on corruption to Parliament Last year, the number of corruption cases fell by 11% from what was already an all-time low. Many countries send officials to come to study our experience. They want to know how we do it, what laws we have, how our system is organized. And quite a few have in fact done similar things as we have done. They set up anti-corruption agencies like CPIB. They promulgate codes of conduct for civil servants. They pass stiff laws against corruption. And yet, corruption doesn't always disappear. They just look around us at other countries. So often, corruption is accepted as the natural state of things. It's entrenched. It becomes impossible to eradicate. Because once it's gone into the system, without money, people cannot get elected and so clean candidates or political parties have no chance. You need money to get elected. And having got elected, you need to recoup that money. The system perpetuates itself. And it reaches the point where people are no longer outraged by corrupt officials, but resigned to the way things are. Because they believe that even if they kick out one batch of corrupt leaders, whoever replaces them will behave exactly the same. In contrast, we in Singapore have developed a system and a culture that eschews corruption. Elections do not cost a lot of money. Singaporeans expect and demand a clean system. They don't condone giving or accepting or asking for social lubricants to get things done. People believe that they can make it because they can work hard not because they have special connections or they are paying extra fees. And that's the way things should be. People readily report corrupt practices when they encounter them, and they trust that the law applies to all and that the government will enforce the laws without fear or favour. Businesses, too, have confidence that in Singapore, rules are transparently and fairly applied. The public service is professional, Officers are imbued with the right values. They embrace the ethos of public service. They are paid fair and realistic wages, benchmarked to private sector practices and earnings. That reduces the temptation for public officers to accept a bribe and makes the problem of fighting corruption manageable. We have a system that works, and we must keep it that way. So this two-in-one CRHC, Corruption Reporting and Heritage Centre, exemplifies our attitude. It's a physical place where members of the public can walk in and report suspected corrupt, corruption cases in person. And it shows that the government treats complaints about corruption 
seriously and transparently. We will investigate any complaint on corruption thoroughly. And in fact, many CPIB investigations, successful ones, arise from tip-offs by the public. So we encourage members of the public who know of or suspect any corrupt behaviour to step forward and to inform CPIB. This CRHC, this centre, is also to educate the public. CPIB used to have a heritage centre, but it was housed inside the CPIB HQ. So unless there's some reason you've gone into the CPIB HQ, it's not so easy to go and see the heritage centre. This one is open to the public, much more accessible. It even has a new MRT station, a Stevens station, just on its doorstep. Here, the public can find out more about how CPIB tackled high corruption cases in the past. And it will reinforce the message that every Singaporean plays a role in fighting corruption. That's why we publicise corruption cases prominently, and I'm happy that CPIB has come up with a creative way to engage the public through a short story competition. And I encourage, encourage CPIB to continue to look for opportunities to put the message out. Singapore's success depends on keeping the country clean and corruption-free. The courts, the government, civil servants, police officers, all must continue to uphold the highest levels of professionalism and integrity. But the public also plays an important role to maintain our social norms, to eschew corruption, to uphold the standards. Our founding fathers left us a clean system built up over more than half a century. It's a legacy that we can be proud of and we should do our utmost to protect. So, thank you very much and I'm very happy that this place is now open for business. I hope it does not have too much business. <laughs> but I hope it will get the message through. Thank you very much.